Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. Jim Jordan, Dave McCann with you in Studio B on this Thursday. Thir Thursdays in Big 12 play are the slow day. Oh, no games, you know. It's never slow, though, when you're in the Big 12. We had games last night. We got games coming up on Saturday. Yeah. And to talk about them, we bring in the voice of the Cougars, Greg Bell. Greg, four games into Big 12 play. How's it, how's it been so far for you to these new venues, new teams? Uh, it's been pretty fun so far uh, watching the games. It's been as enjoyable as I would have expected it to be. And by the way, without any coordination, Navy, Navy, and Navy today. That's how we roll here. Thursdays are Navy. Thursday. <laughs> yeah. It's a Navy Thursday. We're sitting in royal seats. Yeah, it seems yeah. to be a nice place. By the way, it, it, yeah, no, it, it, it's unbelievable. It, every night, you know, every time Mark Pope sits down with us, and, and I think it, he feels more this way after wins, of course, but just, he's, you know, how much fun is this, is the vibe you get from him. And it really is. I mean, every night you've got to be your absolute sharpest. You know you're in for an absolute grind, a fight, and a battle, and it's been that way four games, and I expect it for two more times, and it's been a thrill, yeah. The swing of emotion is interesting because a win is – is we're all going to Disneyland, and and a loss has everyone, especially the coaches, going, oh, this is the worst thing ever. Um, and and it's just a separation of a couple of points with the same guys. But it's a different feel to me, Dave, from WCC days. If you lost to the wrong team in the WCC, you were bumming. You know, it meant a lot. And there are no wrong teams right. in, in the Big 12. You know, uh, every loss, generally speaking, is a good loss. Mm -hmm. There could be some net fluctuations where you might have a sub-100 net loss that doesn't look as good as others. But for the most part, when you lose in the Big 12, uh, it's not uh, back to the drawing board, what are we going to do? It's pick up, move on, let's go. You know, it's that good a league. And so it feels different that way. There's a, in, in the WCC, it was much more risk than reward. Yeah, uh, the risk being you lose to the wrong team. Yes, and in in the Big Twelve, it's much more reward than risk. Uh, you're rewarded even sometimes in your setbacks because of how good the competition is. At the end of the regular season last year, BYU loses, you know, around then to Pepperdine, and I said the good news is that will never happen again. What just happened is the unexpected loss on the road. Now, it, if you went on the road, you probably had to upset somebody. But this BYU team, since Ned has come out, has been in the top five the whole time, yeah. Greg. This has been a really impressive run, and I don't think BYU is going to fall outside the top 30 in Ned the whole time. They'll be a quad one for everybody. Which, taking you know, maybe fast forward just to a bit of a discussion we might be having here in a minute or two about, you know, how do you make the NCAA tournament out of the Big 12 in terms of what record gets you in? I think it's less about record. Um, let's look to last year, for example. Uh, a 7 and 11. West Virginia team got in over an 8-10 and 10 Oklahoma State team. Oklahoma State finished ahead of West Virginia in the standings, but West Virginia was a top 25 Ken Palm and Net team. West Virginia, or Oklahoma State was in the 40s. So I think even now, we'll look less maybe at the record. Is it 500? Is it under, And where, where do they stand still in those, in those Net and Ken Palm rankings? Because West Virginia showed at a 7, four games under 500. You know, can you expect that every year in every league? Maybe not, but in that year, because of what they did, it worked for them. So that's yeah. why I'm kind of hesitant to put a, a, a number or they need this many wins or above or below 500. Let's just kind of see where they sit in the overall picture because, uh, you know, you could lose two or three games in a row and they might not kill you in, in the net yeah. or the Ken Palm. Two years ago, to that point, Iowa State did that as well. They were 7-11 and went to the Sweet 16. Yeah. And, and given that BYU's net and Ken Palm is so good, it feels like BYU could be in that space where if they went 7-11, and 11, perhaps that could be the minimum threshold or something. It feels like if you go beyond that, that might be a little much. But we've seen, yeah. we've seen a 7-11 and 11 work. Right. So now, you, now I almost kind of count down where it's like get at least five more. It, and you go 5-9, and nine, like you've got a great shot, which is very different of a business model than we've been used to in the WCC where it has been risk award. And that's fun because you're like, okay, at home – take care of business here and there, and then you've got a couple of games on the road that feel more winnable than others, but you never know in the league in Oklahoma State and West Virginia, but hey, yeah, you get at least five more, you're feeling right. pretty and good. Whether it's today or two or four weeks from now, 500 in the, in the, in the Big 12 is a good place to be. <laughs> yeah. This is a reflection of the genius of the, of the preseason schedule because BYU entered the Big 12 with a top five net. They didn't have to earn the net number in the Big 12, and, and it's, as we've seen these teams do over the past, it's, it's so easy to maintain your net number than to go get your net number. Mm. You know, when, when you're sitting at 92 in the net, you've got to beat Gonzaga just to jump up into the top 50. Yeah. Well, if you're already number three in the net and you get beat by, say, Utah on the road, you fall one right. spot. Yeah. And now you go into a league that only supports the net number 
and for the first time in forever, BYU had a net number that said, bring it on. Yeah. Make it stronger. Not that you're gaming the system, but the Big 12 makes it a lot easier to, to again, maintain as opposed to have to make yeah. big jumps in, in, in conference play. And again, what BYU did out of the league is really impressive because to get the numbers they did, they had to not just beat teams. Mm -hmm. They had to throttle teams and do so efficiently, and they kept doing it night after night after night. Tuesday, we saw a different version of a win for BYU. Um, yes, they had the threes. Yes, they had the assists. They got to the line a lot. And this was something that you had tweeted about that was a, a big focus was, wow, the foul disparity and the free throws were an issue. And to me, I was like, this is not sustainable to have success. Yet BYU changed that. So how sustainable do you feel like um, a game like that is where BYU got to the line a lot more? Yeah, I think they will get to the line more frequently in the Big 12 than out of league. Um, it wasn't necessary necessarily out of league. They're still last nationally in, in percentage of points scored on free throws. And they're near the bottom nationally in free throw rate. That is free throw attempts per field goal attempts. But the number's already ticked up in league. Uh, in, in league, there, there are three teams getting to the line less frequently than BYU through four games. And, and BYU's a good free throw team when they get there in league. They're, they're fifth in the conference in, in free throw percentage. So they're, they're already doing more. They don't have to do a ton more, but they're mm -hmm. doing a little more because the whistle's different, and they're getting used to it. They're learning about the whistle in the Big 12. It's a very downhill league, and BYU's not as downhill a team as others, but they can still do it. I mean, it's not that BYU avoids the rim. If you watch BYU, they get to the rim. It's just how they draw their fouls. And because of the high volume of threes, you're going to get fouled on fewer threes than you will, too. That's just a fact. But we showed, or BYU's already shown that they can do it more frequently, maybe not as frequently as other teams, but they'll do a little better than they have been. And that's just a function of league play and the whistle. So I think there's already some positive signs developing. But keep in mind, uh, Houston won last night big against Texas Tech. Houston took three free throws. I mean, didn't need it. it. <laughs> it's, it's not so much how many free throws you get. Yeah. It's it's how are you scoring your points? And if you're going nuts from the three point line, you're more than happy to outscore a team from the three point line as, as opposed to the free throw line. How are you scoring your points and what's working on a given night is much more important than raw free throw attempts or free throw makes. As long as you're not shying away and as long BYU is a really relentless and aggressive team. I mean, they go hard. And as a function of going hard, there will be nights where you have higher free throw nights. And until the very, very end of the game, BYU was the better uh, free throw drawing team against Iowa State got some late, late free throws sure. that were inconsequential. But for the most part, BYU held and managed that category. At the same time, they were outdistancing themselves from the Cyclones from the three-point line by a wide, wide margin. It was a really good match for BYU, too, because Iowa State's profile was they'll give you the three look. And that's what BYU took advantage of because that's who BYU is. Those foul shots are an indicator, too, of what kind of game we're going to have. Is it going to be 57-52 or is it going to be 90-70? to 90 to 70? Because these teams, like Iowa State came up and tried to be so physical. And, um, and they spent time moving their bodies around and throwing elbows and fighting. There were a lot of hard fouls. And Richie Saunders got, uh, you know, decked on, on, a, on a stupid foul from, from Iowa State. But that was the mentality they brought in was like, Let's, let's do what Cincinnati did. Let's try to push BYU to the edge physically. But you can't do that when you're behind. And so BYU hits those threes, and they're still trying to be physical. Now they're down 10, and they're not even quite sure who to guard. Yeah, and, and BYU is a hard guard for everybody. Mm -hmm. They're a hard team to defend. The way they move the ball, where the passes can come from, just the, the sheer volume of threes and being out to so many good shooters, everyone takes them and everyone can make them. Uh, BYU is as tough a, a scout for any other team as any other team may be for BYU in terms of a scout. And in terms of, uh, you know, losing Dawson Baker is tough because he was good off the dribble, but the ball movement of BYU is special and the offensive numbers have, have shown that it's been fun. Texas Tech, uh, you know, coming off a tough loss where they lost big at Houston, but that is going to be a tough game uh, in Lubbock. What do you expect in that matchup in the next one? Yeah, teams don't shoot a lot of free throws against Texas Tech. They're, 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 they're one of the top 10 teams in the country in, in lowest free throw rate against, and they're, they're bottom 10 in terms of percentage of points scored on them against free throws. So don't expect this to be the night where you shoot 30 free throws, not against this team. Again, Houston shot three and still won big. What Texas Tech does similar to Iowa State, not to the same extent, is they allow a lot of points on threes and they allow a high three-point attempt rate. And so I know the, a team that likes that. Yeah, so, so this week is actually a good matchup for what BYU does and does really well in both Iowa State and Texas Tech. We'll see how it plays out on, on Saturday. We can eat an inside game on the road. It seems like every team does. Where's Fu set with his hamstring 
And is he expected to play on Saturday? Yeah, I, I think the chances are actually not terrible because uh, Tuesday in our pregame chat, um, Coach Pope was, was ruling Foose out. And then a few minutes later, he's out there warming up and in uniform. You know, Trevin Nell was in sweats. So, you know, when I talk to Coach Pope, yeah, we're not going to have Trev, not going to have Foose tonight. Uh, and then Trev's in sweats, as we expected. But then there was Foose warming up, went through yeah. the entire warm-up. And, was, and, and so and after the game, you know, even Coach Pope said, oh, I was a little bit surprised that he actually felt like I could do this. But he said, man, if I can get through this game, if I can somehow get through this game and not have to use him, that's what I'd like by a few more days. And so I think, you know, you, you buy a few more days, and, and maybe Foose is more likely to, to see the floor Saturday against Texas Tech. We'll see. And hopefully Trev and Nell as well. So, yeah, well, yeah, the good yeah. thing, I think, with Trev is, is they ruled out a lot of the really bad stuff that could have mm -hmm. uh, happened as a result of the injury. So it's not as bad as they thought, and so more short-term than long-term, and, and that's great news. But, man, alive. Uh, let's, let's just go back and applaud BYU for, for doing what it did against Iowa State with essentially a seven-man rotation. Yep. Uh, I mean, that's losing, losing Foose and Trevin for that kind of game, any game in the Big 12, that's going to be a hit. But they didn't take it like it's going to be a hit. Let's, let's, just, let, let's go, let's pick it up. And, and, and everybody came to play, and they, had, they really needed that against Iowa State. And so I'm just so impressed by the fact that they can lose two really key players and, and win a game going away against that team. Again, you don't do that. Against Iowa State. I mean, we've already talked, it's been on Twitter, et cetera, but TJ Otzelberger had never allowed 87 points in a game at Iowa State. 81 was the high this over year two and three. a half seasons. You know, and, and you don't get 21 Crazy. assists against, uh, against Iowa State. You don't even have a series of 11 turnovers against Iowa State. B BYU did all those things. So what's the most impressive number? I don't know. Is it 87? Is it 21? Is it 11? They did all the things no one does against Iowa State, and they did it without two really important players. I mean, what a huge accomplishment. Yeah. Big time, winning the Ezra Taft Benson Bowl. Yeah. He, got, he got his Masters there. That's big. BYU, and, BYU and won proud. the Benson Bowl. And the hotel game, you know, Marriott versus Hilton. <laughs> yes. and, and so uh, it'll, the BYU will be at Hilton here in, uh, in March.